How's everybody doing? All right. It's great to be back for year three of Beamer Ball. And uh, I, I think the most pressing thing we all want to know is not how many words are going to be in my opening statement or it's not going to be some quirky question perhaps from one of you, but it's, it's about the guy that's not here right now, and that's Steve Fink. And, and I, I just have to say it's, it's very timely that he's not here. He's the, he's the innocent bystander right now. And, and I think what we all want to know is what is his plan for this fall? Right? Is, 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 am I, am I going to be here every Wednesday? Am I going to be here every other Wednesday? Is it going to be at his discretion? We want answers, right? Inquiring minds want to know what the plan is, right? So we want answers. We want the truth. Think wherever you are right now, if you're watching this, all right, please give us some feedback. Put your people in touch with my people and let's get something worked out, all right, and get it on the calendar. And he's not here to respond. So um, it was a good summer. It was an interesting summer. Um, we've got one left at home right now. Uh, so, and she's a senior. So we had a chance to take her on some college visits uh, while we had a little time off, which was cool. A little father, daughter type thing there. And I had jury duty for the first time in my life. Uh, so I, I finally um, got pinned down and had to do that over summer vacation and, and it turned out to be a really good experience it turned out to be something that i was really uh proud that i was able to do and fulfill my responsibilities and i didn't end up on any big cases it really ended up being two days where i was sent home one day in mid-afternoon and one day mid-morning but just going through the process and and seeing um heath taylor who was the judge i was just so impressed with him and, and how he treated everybody in that courtroom with respect, but didn't take it too, too seriously. Um, just had a great demeanor about him. And it's just one more example of good management, right? You, you know good management with you, when you see it. You may not always be able to describe it, but you know it when you see it. And um, I, was, uh, I was, oh, Steve, we were just talking about you. We'll get you caught up. We don't, I don't want to slow this down. Um, but, uh, but that was a really good experience. And, uh, and I also was able to read a book on the 1975 Cincinnati Reds, The Big Red Machine, which uh, some of you in here are old enough to appreciate uh, that team. So, um, so it's year three, but in many ways, it's still year one from a special team standpoint. And the reason for that is that while you have some guys that you've invested all of this time, effort, energy, built a rapport, got on the same page um, with, and some of those guys are still with us and they've been doing, uh, dealing with me and, and doing the same drills and, and involved in the same system for, for now going on a third season. The challenge is that as job descriptions change and evolve and some of those guys become more involved on offense and defense, um, somebody that perhaps I was able to use on three or four units last year. Now, maybe he becomes a one or two unit guy and you have to plug in somebody else uh, into those roles that, that are now vacated. So that's an ongoing challenge for me. Um, and, and, and sometimes, quite frankly, with, with new players, um, you feel like you're out there coaching youth camp, right? These guys uh, maybe had zero expectations or experience being involved in special teams before they got here. And now all of a sudden, it's an integral part of what we do, meetings in the morning and, and practice. And uh, there are very high expectations for the level of attention to detail that, that they're going to have to have. So, um, so you, you almost look at it like, uh, like the old game of risk, you know, and, and you have so many armies and you can only put them in so many places. And so it's, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm weak in South America. I'm willing to lose South America, but I am going to fortify Europe, and there is no way all right, you're going to attack me in Europe, right? So that's kind of my day-to-day. My -day. It's always changing. It's always evolving. And, that, and that's before you even throw in injuries 
and, and specific things relative to a game plan uh, when you look at matchups and, and you look at the strengths of an, of an opponent. So this week is a good week because it's not game week yet, um, but it's always somewhat of a hectic and stressful week for me because you're trying to go back and, and look at every little thing. Did you cover things thoroughly enough? And when you covered them, did you have the same guy in there that might be in the lineup right now? Because you might have covered something in early August, but maybe some of the people that were out there doing it when you repped it in practice and so forth have now changed. Um, and so, you know, it's a constant checks and balances and, and going back and, and um, just, just making sure that, that no stone is unturned um, as, you, as you get to uh, game week and, and now you really got to get these guys moving and classes start and you have less time for, for everything. So um, I, I feel like there's a fine line for me and for the team between being confident and, and being humble. And so you have, to, you have to walk that fine line every day. Um, and, uh, you know, I started off this morning's meeting, and we had a good day yesterday, really good effort and practice, and, and I let them know that. Um, I wanted to pat them on the back for, for a job well done, but, but really from there on it was, you know, general patent mode for me because we had a big day um, relative to one of our units and, and covering a lot of things that we hadn't covered yet, and, and we needed total focus and we needed to maximize what we were going to get out of the meeting and, and practice today. So it's that, it's that balancing act back and forth every day and, um, and, and being demanding, but still letting these guys know when, when we do something well that, uh, um, you know, we're, we're, we're proud of them. And um, hopefully, hopefully we are a uh, – it's like when you, you in, invest in a mutual fund, right? And, and one of the first things you read is uh, past – uh, results are not a guarantee of future performance, right? So we don't forget that we've outperformed the S&P 500 the last two years. We're proud of that. It's good stuff. But every year presents its own unique set of challenges. And so we need to stay humble. We need to stay grounded. And, um, and we need to, to stay after it. Um, you know, Teddy Roosevelt used to say, and, and my dad used to tell me, you know, speak softly and carry a big stick. So hopefully that's what we're going to be able to do here. Questions from you guys. Pete, um, with all of the trick plays that have worked so successfully, I'm sure a lot of people are saying like, well, they won't be able to catch anybody by surprise. Yet you kind of kept doing that all throughout last year. How difficult is it to keep coming up with new formations and how much input do the players have in coming up with these schemes? Sure. Well, they love it. You know, they are, they are into it uh, whenever we can – um, prepare them for something that, that might um, uh, be a potential call at the right time. But it's also getting them to understand that just because you practice something doesn't necessarily mean it's going to get called. And sometimes it might get called in October or November. You still have to install it and practice it and, and have confidence in it. So um, sometimes it requires uh, a, a great deal of patience and um, – and looking for the opportune times and then making sure that you can, can execute at those opportune times. Um, so coming up with new ideas is not a problem. <laughs> uh, uh, if anything, um, you know, we've got, you know, kind of my off season, my summer, it's, it's like, you know, refreshing the Rolodex and, and, uh, and then just, you know, tucking those things away for, for when the right um, time may come to, to get them ready, but um, we don't want to be known for that, right? It's great, it's awesome, but we want to be known for for being sound and playing hard and and uh, bringing our best every week. And sometimes, especially early in the season, that means not making the critical mistakes in games that beat yourself, right? And you see that all the time. You saw it a ton last year on special teams, but especially you see that in the month of September when some of these teams go out there and they're caught off guard by something and get exposed in a big way. And with all of these new players that we're trying to get ready to go, that's, that's what I worry the most about.
but let me worry so they can go play. And that's what I tell them all the time. That's my job to worry. Your job is to go play fast. Pete, you mentioned maybe special teams role shifting as guys get more offensive snaps. Xavier and DeCarion were two kick returners last year, probably going to start offensively this year. Do they go into the season as your starting kick returners, or do you kind of have to figure that situation out? Yeah, so there are certain things that I call non-negotiables, okay? So like when Jen and I got engaged and we were getting ready to get married, I said, listen, I'm never driving a minivan. That is a non-negotiable. I will ride a bike, I will walk, I will take the bus, but I am not driving a minivan. I don't care how many kids we have. Um, so to me, you know, kick returners, those are non-negotiables, right? So those two guys, Juju, uh, we're developing some other guys. Um, certainly Juju has made plays and games for us at that position before, and I have a lot of confidence in him. Uh, the team has a lot of confidence in him. So we've got three or four. Uh, uh, Marion Brown has had a good preseason catching kicks. And then we've got some younger guys that can really, really go that uh, – you know, they're just raw right now, and, and um, certain things we do back there are, are new to them. You know, they're learning an appreciation that this is not, you know, roll a ball out in the gym and go play. Um, so they're going to need some time, but there's some dynamic young guys there that uh, I'm excited about bringing along here over the course of the season as well. Uh, kind of stick with positions. you got to replace two gunners this year. What goes into the process of looking for those, and has anybody stood out to you at those spots yet? Yeah, it's right now it's by committee, um, and, and we need to hone in on some guys by next week. So that is, a, is right at the top of the list um, and, and ties right into some of my comments earlier about replacing people, whether they're still here and, and have bigger roles on O&D or – um, you know, they've moved on and gotten their degree and are playing or um, in the real world, all that good stuff. So Gunner is, is a big deal. And I would say we've got a number of different receivers and defensive backs that we have been rolling through there. Um, so we may be ones, twos, threes with our punt, but we may have seven, eight, nine guys at Gunner that roll through on each side so that we make sure we're evaluating a lot of people, developing a lot of people. Um, and it may be a situation in games where you roll people through there. Now, the big challenge for me with that is double number issues, right? So you, you, you have to be cognizant of that too. I think we have 33 or 34 double numbers on the team right now. So I'm always uh, trying to, to clue into that too so that we don't uh, put ourselves in a bad spot uh, on a Saturday night. Have you seen the TV show Jury Duty? I think it's on like Amazon. Only an ad for it. Only an ad for it. When, I haven't when you have some it time. Yeah, you know, I, you know, when I free time, that'll be good. Yeah, that'll be uh, if it's still around when I retire. Right, <laughs> I'll, I'll have a chance to to watch. I will tell you this, you know, when I do have a little bit of free time, Jen Limbo gets really scared because she's like, "Is this what this guy is going to be like when he's retired?" My goodness, like maybe you should just keep working. You know, when, when, when I start to, you know, get antsy about preseason camp coming and, you know, start, you know, just demeanor changes a little bit around the house and she knows I'm starting to drift away. And, and, but in some ways that's like a good thing, you know, because I've probably driven her crazy for the last two or three weeks before that. Yeah. So. What, with, with all the, the young guys, new guys, whether from the whatever up, are, are there a handful that you can – maybe name that, that folks can expect to see a good bit of with, with your groups? Um, yeah, well, first I would say that uh, we have some, some walk-on guys that have really developed over the course of our time here, and some of those guys are starting to make their presence felt in drills and, and work their way into role-playing positions on certain units. Um, so I'm excited to and proud of those guys that they've stayed the course and and really really learned our system uh, as as thoroughly as they have and um, and th that's always really really good to see. Um, some of the young guys, um, well, just going back to a previous question about returners, 
Um, you know, we're looking at Vakari Swain back there. We're looking at Tyshawn Russell back there. I think those two guys are, are really dynamic. Elijah Caldwell has done it in high school, and he's very natural catching the ball as well. So those are three guys that um, I think have some have some potential to to help us as returners and, and maybe in some other spots on special teams as well. When it comes to you know refreshing the Rolodex, as you say during the off season, what does that look like for you? Like, is that watching last year's film? Are there other teams that in coaches that you you know study their things? Like, where do you pull new ideas from? I guess. Yeah, it's a little bit of everything. Um, and we have access to so much video. Our, our video staff does a great job of importing all this different video. And, and so the first thing I'll always do is really thoroughly look back at us and what we did well and what we didn't do well and how people attacked us because you know your opponents are looking at that stuff as well. So you want to make sure that through the spring, the summer, and preseason that you're – you're addressing any potential threats to, to what you've done. Uh, but then I, I do a lot of, of studying comparable opponents, teams that are running stuff that is somewhat similar to us and, and maybe they're doing things just a little bit different way. Um, I watch a lot of, uh, of the big plays in college football on all the different units and look for trends and look for things that might fit us um, you know, we ran half the muddle huddle snaps in all of the FBS college football last year. So there were 14 of them. Uh, so I watched our seven and then I watched the other seven. Usually Army's in there for a couple. Jeff Munkin, who's a good friend of mine, the head coach up there, who actually has a daughter that comes here to South Carolina. Um, he's a big muddle huddle guy. So we usually have a conversation at some point over the summer about that as well. So there's there's some good uh, video available to learn from. And then I sort of have my core group of guys, whether they be former assistant coaches of mine or uh, some some good friends in the profession that, uh, that I'll talk to. I think as the years go on, um, while I still love to do clinics and talk about some of the basic stuff we do to, with high school coaches and college coaches, and I really think that's a, a responsibility of ours to give back to the profession, when it comes to some of the little things that I hold dear, I find myself being a little bit more tight-lipped about some of that uh, specifically and, and you know, talking in detail only with a, a smaller handful of people. Hey, Pete, after the um, the first spring game, I know, uh, excuse me, first scrimmage a couple weeks ago, Shane was talking about how, like, Nick Harbour and some of the younger guys getting on. I think you guys call it the um, punt pressure team, the unit. When you look at some of those younger guys, how are they coming along in the sense of buying into what you're talking about? And you kind of talked about it with Hill a little bit, but those other positions that kind of get overlooked but are very important, obviously, with what you guys are trying to achieve. Yeah, so it's all about – being reliable, being consistent, and and um, staying plugged in. I think the the guys that play as freshmen sometimes are not the best athletes, but they are the guys that can be the same guy every day and and stack practices, um, not be a flash in the pan and look great at one thing one day and then you know you don't see them for four days. But it's just show up, bring your lunch pail. And, and keep getting after it every day. And, uh, and that's in meetings too. So, you know, I called on Nick Harbor today in a meeting and I asked him a question about a slide that I was showing that, uh, you know, probably half the room wouldn't have gave me a quick response to it, but he gave me the right answer and he gave it to me without much delay. And that's good. That means, you know, he's in there paying attention and staying plugged in and and he's got he's got a football IQ, and and uh, so those are things you look for, um, and and it's a process. And Shane did a great job of talking to the team about this earlier in the week. Like, not everybody's a ready-made guy, and and is able to be out there. Um, it, it's and that's okay. Like our job is to keep developing every guy on the roster every day, um, and and for some people. 
that's going to take more time than others. And it might be certain things they do really well right now, um, but don't put them in a spot when uh, that they're not ready to do it. Um, so uh, I, I, I think we have a really talented freshman class, really talented, and they're good kids, and, and they're on time. And I, I think I told you guys this in the spring. When I can start my meeting a minute or two early, that just starts my day off the right way because guys are in their seat, they're plugged in, they're ready to go. Uh, maybe I could spend 30 seconds more on something that's really important in that meeting that otherwise I'd have to just – brush over really quickly and coach it on the fly on the field, right? So you, you love working with guys that um, come in and, uh, and want to be here and, and are buying into the, the culture and, and the values of the program. Pete asked about kick returner, but you're replacing Josh too from a punt return perspective. Yes. How's that competition gone and who are some guys there? Yeah, so um, I like how that's coming. And again, it's a little bit committee right now, but uh, Marion Brown has, has had a good preseason. Uh, Eddie Lewis has had a good preseason. And of course, Eddie's got a lot of experience having done it at, at Memphis. Um, Jalen Kilgore, I think, is a guy with a bright future back there. And Vicari Swain is very natural at it. Um, I've been repping him a little bit more here recently and need to continue to get him some work. And then Juju can do that as well. So I feel like for one spot right there, we are, we are very deep. And we could very easily go two deep returners in some situations if, if, that, uh, if it called for it and feel very comfortable putting two guys out there on the field. Uh, you, you might have a team that's a, a big rugby punt team and you like to have two returners back there so that if those balls are going in different directions, um, now you have the ability to, to field more of those kicks. So, um, so I feel good about our punt returner situation and uh, you know, we'll see how things evolve here over the next 10 days and, and who trots out there uh, in Charlotte next Saturday night. All right, great seeing everybody. And I don't know when I'll see you again.